Okay, so here we are again, going off script again. None of this is, by the way, don't try this at home. It's dangerous. Uh, nobody should try this. Only professionals should be doing this kind of stuff. Welcome yeah. to Off-Roading with Bob. Yeah, exactly. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, I was so blessed to have three wonderful partners and um, for all intents and purposes, their family. Uh, Mike Rooney, who is now CEO of Vernon, um, Denny Hurt, who was one of our just invaluable profits of our business, really. Uh, and uh, my brother, Vince, uh, God love him. I mean, he was the founder. He was the inspiration. Um, and we all had a motto. I don't even know where it started, uh, but it became the company mantra. And it lasted through two acquisitions by banks. And that was, and it was posted everywhere, right? Have fun and make money in that order. Now, if you're not making any money, you're probably not having any fun. But the idea is, you know, you spend nine hours sometimes a day, maybe more doing this thing called work mm -hmm. and building a business. Why do you want to spend about half of your day not having any fun? Um, and that's that's that goes to the principal, the owners, uh, as well as all the people underneath them as well as their customers. So I'm not talking about having fun, let's everybody go outside and you know go on a playground. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having a job that's doing what you're doing, it's rewarding. And you hit on the topic of, if you're just doing robotic work, how fulfilling is that in your day? So how is it that when you are looking at a company, and you're thinking about, you know, potential uh, transformation. How do I get from point A to point B? And I do this as well. Mm -hmm. But really, how do you make it, Deb, so that this transformation builds in fulfillment, brings in, when people are fulfilled in what they're doing, mm -hmm. they're going to have a better time, right? So how do you build that in? Maybe you've never thought about that before. I think you have. Uh, I'll guarantee you have. How do you think about that when you're building this to make sure that you're building this out, not just for the pocketbook of the principal, but for the mental well-being of the principal and his people? Um, so is it, that's such a, such a great question. Um, and I was thinking about my experience reimagining my business when when COVID kind of killed everything for me, um, you know, it was a scary time for everyone. Um, I, I did, a um, I did an exercise that was really impactful and I just got alone for several days and really thought through what is it that I really want. It was hard to answer at first. At first I had to answer, what is it that I know that I know that I know that I don't want? And I don't want to have to jump through a lot of hoops to help somebody. I, I don't want to work with people who don't value what I do. Um, I don't want to spend my day putting out fires and fixing problems and doing maintenance kind of stuff. I mean, so it's like, I got really clear on, on what I know I don't want. And that helped me to, to shift gears to like, what do I want? And when I thought about it and I, I can kind of see the, the mind map that I drew, I, ha I still have it kind of burned in my brain. I want to have fun. I want to want to wake up in the morning to do what I do every day to make a living because, you know, I want to bring my full self and my full passion to what I do. And I want to always be in the areas of my greatest strengths. And I know that curiosity is my superpower and, you know, leaders who are not as confident sometimes can see that as a threat they're not my people. They're just not. And, you know, one of the things that I have realized is what I do and who I am is not for everyone. 
But if we are a fit and I'm for you, watch out because we are going to rock the world and we are going to make awesome happen. And, and so I designed this business and the way that we do business so that I could have fun with it. I could have fun with my clients as we are exploring the art of the possible. To me, that is just amazing fun. Let's explore the art of the possible. Let's take the limits off. Let's really engage our imagination of what could be and then step back and look at, okay, what's possible now? And let's get excited about the future instead of, you know, oh my gosh, we have to come in and do this thing. No, let's work together to create and co-create such a compelling vision of the future that it not only excites you and drives you to want to jump out of bed to make it happen, but it also attracts your team to come along for the ride and be a part of it. I don't believe that buy-in is this exercise you do as a bolt-on activity at the end of creating your vision. I believe that we gain that buy-in as we're bringing people along for the ride because we're so excited about that bigger future that we want to create. It's so much bigger than our past. We can't help but run toward it. And if we can work together to really create a clear picture of the vision for the future, people are going to run with me to make it happen. And that is to me, the greatest fun that you could have. And it doesn't matter if you're applying that to business or some fun activity that you want to do with your friends. You know, we all want to make awesome happen. Nobody's waking up in the morning to do mediocre. And so that's kind of the mindset that I bring to it in the work that we're doing internally at Tomorrow Zone and also the stuff that we're doing for our clients. You know, that that that's fantastic. I mean, because that's exactly the way, I, you know, I think about it. It's the way uh, our colleagues at RAS think about it. It is. I've carried that through, you know, my brother's vision of had fun and make money. Um, you know, mm -hmm. Vince would be proud of, you know, trying to instill that in other companies. It's all about having fun and making money because, uh, you know, I, I would, my brother always used to say that, keep going back to my brother, but, you know, one of the things he said, he's you not know, always drive faster to work than I drive going home from work. And I always want to be that way. And so every leader, um, who we work with, you know, we want them to feel that way. And we then want that to filter down that every employee feels excited about going in the work, not, oh uh, gosh, another day. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the same way we choose our, our clients in a lot of respects. Um, there's a bit of a feeling out before we decide to take on a client. Can Absolutely. they, can they be, I always look at it this way. Do I see these people as being longtime, lifelong friends of mine that we can have fun together? Mm -hmm. uh, and I truly live by that. Uh, and yeah, sometimes I get it wrong and I try to I try to end those relationships as quick as I can. But, you know, I can pretty much figure out chemistry and, and you can too. And is that something valid to talk to business leaders about, about the idea of instilling a sense of, you know, having fun so that you do then get just true buy-in and engagement versus mm -hmm. coerced buy-in and engagement because they have mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and we don't really talk about it as let's make sure we're having fun because, you know, we're not being hired to lead you through a playground experience or something. You know, there's a real business need <laughs> when we're coming to work with you. Right. But, you know, one of the things that we do, and it's, it is the heart of tomorrow zone is, is human centered innovation. It's vital to build relationships and trust with the teams that we're working with so that we can be effective together and that also enables us to have a lot of fun along the way because we are getting to know you as humans and recognizing that you're humans and you are not robots we have a joke in my team all the time we're constantly having to confirm our humanity <laughs> you know you go to websites you're like i am not a robot yeah. I've used AI for so long. Um, I started experimenting in 2016. And so, you know, people have kind of heard some of my stories and my team members are continually asked, are, are you a person? 
<laughs> but you know, even you know, in our in our team internally, and even with our our uh, teams that we're working with with our clients, we end up creating a culture where we can trust each other, and we can have fun, and we can have jokes like that. You know, that just kind of become part of the culture of of the the team that you're working with, and you know that that makes it a lot of fun. I mean, who wants to dread? going to yet another zoom call um you know we try to create experiences that as we're going through and we're co-creating the big picture of where you are and the vision for where you're going we create a really engaging experience that helps you see um helps you see that vision together but also it's enjoyable. And I hear from my clients, you know, I look forward to the meetings that we have with tomorrow's own. We've actually ended work sessions with clients and they clap at the end of our work sessions. They're like, this is the best meeting of my week. And that's by design. We actually design the experience for that. You know, I don't come into these things unprepared. I mean, right. back to what we talked about with digital transformation, a lot of those failures are due to simple lack of preparedness. And we're thinking about the people from the start. How do we bring the people from point A to point Z and recognizing where they're at? And that even as we're working together to achieve these business goals, there's a transformation that happens in each one of those people along the way. And I hear from clients often, you know, I feel like I'm a better leader now because we got to work with you. Oh. And that is That's the sad. thing that makes it worth getting up and doing what we do every day. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Wow. Deb, this has been fantastic. I mean, I think we've, while we went off script, we certainly covered some new areas and, and new insights for our business leaders. Um, so it won't be awesome. long. We'll get this out published and, uh, and talk to you soon. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. The avenues. Thanks for attending. And thank you to Deb Rubin for joining us today. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for Deb. having me, Bob. You're welcome.